what is up everybody um back with another video man Terry to Lil J from Shyrag Wolverine to being snitched on by his own gang by Hip Hop Daily get into it one of the most fierce savages in Chirac the rapper escaped death twice only to get snitched on and ignored by his own gang while locked up let's take a closer look at the story of Lil J the Chirac Wolverine Lil J also known as Jeff the Meth was a rapper from Chicago who was associated with FBG and the Gangsta Disciples. Lil J actually started out as a BD because he grew up in a neighborhood controlled by the gang, but he ended up flipping and becoming an insane GD after he moved to the area around 63rd and St. Lawrence and started hanging out with guys like Tuka and FBG Duck. Oh, he from 63rd. <laughs> Team 600 was just forming. According to E-Day 600, Lil J originally wanted to join 600 because at that time he was still a BD, but Lil J was also known for hanging out with dudes from Jarrell City who were enemies of 600. So he ended up being turned down and would join Jarl City instead and also started hanging out with members of STL EBT. He would be introduced to FBG Duck through a mutual friend named FBG Kells and the two would become tight. At one point, when Lil J was homeless, Duck's mom would take him in and let him sleep on the floor. Together, he and Duck would put in work in the streets and started building a reputation in the city as feared shooters. Lil J would allegedly catch his first body in 2011 with the murder of a dude named Levon from a gang called RMG. According to rumors, Lil J, along with Lil B from Tukaville, tried to rob Levon, but he wouldn't give up too easily. He tried to get away and run to his car, but was shot before he could make it. Levon was later found dead on the scene by police. It's not clear who fired the kill shot, but they were both credited with the hit. It's also been rumored that Lil J was present when O.D. Perry got murdered. J was close with FBG Butta, who was a twin brother of K.I., the female assassin from STL EBT. Butta and K.I. were the ones who allegedly took out O.D., but it's been rumored that Lil J was with them when it happened. Lil J started to build a reputation in the city in 2012 when he and FBG Duck dropped the song, Critical, which contained a diss aimed at Chief Keef. On the track, Duck raps, How the f*** you a chief? You ain't putting in no work? This was around the same time that Chief Keef was first blowing up, so the diss attracted a lot of attention. Lil J would go on to beef with other notable rappers in the city, including E-Day 600, 600 Breezy, and NLMB Lil Bibby. J and Duck would drop an E-Day diss track, Who the f*** is Dude, in September after E-Day made fun of J for getting <laughs> shot on Twitter. This would make Lil J and Duck two of 600's most hated ops. 600 Breezy was probably the most vocal about his hatred for Lil J and was known to tweet things like, Once I smoke Lil J, I'ma retire. And... I'm trying to invent Lil J world. He talked too much. But 600 Bro. wasn't the only ones Lil J had beef with. He even got into it with Lil Bibby from NLMB. Lil J once claimed on Twitter that he caught Bibby lacking and he just ran away scared. Bibby claimed that he only walked away because the people he was with wanted to smoke with Lil J and he knew that if he made a move, Lil J would have gotten murked. Bibby had already built a lot of respect in the streets, so many took his word to be true. He and Jay eventually put it behind them as their gangs weren't actually beefing. They just got into it that one time. But all the beefing would come back to haunt him, and not long after he started rapping, Lil J would be shot nine times in his legs and the back of his neck. Nine times. He would make a recovery and go right back to his old ways, which resulted Bro. in him getting shot again. This time, how do you shoot at someone nine times and not kill? Bro, this is what I be talking about, bro. People in the hood have no aim, bro. You shot at someone nine times and let them survive. There's like, there's just no way, bro. There's no way you shoot at someone nine times and they survive. <laughs> It's just no way, bro. He was hit with six bullets in the leg and bladder, bringing the total number to 15. His oh, so 15 shots, hit, actually. Back every time even earned him the nickname, the Chirac Wolverine by DJ Academics. In 2013, Lil J would start getting close with the dudes from Brick Squad, including Lil Jojo. Jarl City and SCL EBT were beefing at the time, and it seemed like Jay wanted to start claiming Brick Squad to avoid the drama. When Lil Jojo from Brick Squad would be marked by members of 600, Lil J would really turn up in the streets and go full BDK. Around this time, J also started to beef with 051 Young Money, calling them snakes and lames on Twitter. Some members of SCL EBT would have conflicts with 051, which led to a few fights and shootouts. But Duck was cool with one of the most respected members of the gang, 051 Melly, which prevented the situation from becoming a full-on beef. Duck also helped squash the beef with Jarl City, and all three sets became cool. But STL would then start beefing with Brick Squad, which is one of the reasons Lil J started to distance himself from them. He was no longer part of FBG after he and Duck had a dispute. Duck later revealed in an interview with Zach TV that Lil J had been stealing from him and other members of the gang. Mm. He allegedly stole some petty cash from Duck and took a chain from an FBG affiliate named King Yella. It wasn't that much money, so Duck didn't turn his back on him completely, but he did let his homies beat his ass to get Yella's chain back and teach him a lesson about stealing from his own people. So after that, Jay split from FBG and founded a new movement called We The Ops along with FBG Butter. 
They also recruited a dude named Trub, who was affiliated with the Blood Set from outside of Chicago. Trub became the third member of WTO, which meant he was also part of their beef. Jay, Butter, and Trub ended up getting into a shootout with a dude named Jay the Kid from Mitch Block after a drug deal went wrong. They went to go buy some weed from Jay the Kid, but they all got into an argument. Jay, Butter, and Trub went back to Trub's girlfriend's house to get some guns and went back to confront Jay the Kid. That's when the shootout went down and both Trub and Jay the Kid ended up getting hit. Trub would later die in the hospital while Jay mm. survived but was left with a huge scar. Both Lil J and Bro, Bud were also oh my in the hospital God. Jay survived. Bro, that looked like somebody got it just like a, a sword and just cut him in his stomach, bro. Oh my god. But was left with a huge scar. Both Lil J and Butter were also arrested for murder because they went into the situation strapped, which ended up costing their homie's life. Even though Jay the Kid was the one who fired the kill shot, he got off on self-defense because they left and came back with weapons looking for smoke. Due to all his beef with different sets in Chicago, Jay had a tough time behind bars and was constantly getting into fights with ops. But even though he kept it solid and held his own behind bars, not everyone would do the same. No one from FBG called to check up on him and put money on his books. Even though they had their problems, it never escalated to an all-out beef, so Jay expected some loyalty from his brothers. But the others obviously didn't feel the same after Jay stole from them and started his own crew. To make matters worse for Jay, FBG Butter allegedly snitched on him. At first, Jay was offered an 8-year plea deal but turned it down thinking he could do better in court. Then photos of Butter signing some kind of paperwork in the interrogation room started going around the internet after Jay leaked them himself. Butter denied the accusations, but he did end up getting out after a few years while Jay remained locked up. Mm. After getting out, Butter continued to deny that he snitched. No official evidence was ever presented to prove that he snitched, it was all just speculation based on a photo of Butter in the interrogation room. But even the accusation ended up hurting his reputation. After that, Butter cut all ties with Lil J and claimed they would never be cool again. Lil J ended up beating the murder charge only to be sentenced to 14 years in a state penitentiary for conspiracy to commit murder, intent to kill, and injure for nearly taking out Jay the Kid. But the time behind bars gave Lil Jay some time to reflect on his lifestyle and his choices. He ran into some old ops, including Rondo Number 9 from 600, and they were able to put the past behind him. He realized that he never actually had a problem with the people he was beefing with, but the street mentality forced him to be at war. So instead of beefing, he decided to focus on self-improvement and getting out of prison. He even reached out to one of his old homies, FPG Duck, to patch things up and put the past behind him. Duck was once his brother at the end of the day, and Jay was somewhat responsible for their falling out. It ended up being perfect timing because not long after that, Duck would be shot and killed in Chicago. Mm -hmm. In the end, Lil Jay went through pretty much everything you can go through in the streets, but still lived to tell the story. He almost lost his life on more than one occasion, had his own gang flip on him, and ended up going to prison with no one to watch his back. Even if it wasn't an ideal situation, it got him off the streets before he ended up getting killed and forced him to reconsider his choices. Hopefully, with good behavior, Lil J can eventually be paroled and get a second chance at life. It seems like he's matured a lot since getting locked up and won't go back to his old ways as the Chirac Wolverine. Dang, bro. Hip hop, what happened to your intro, bro? You should be in the video, bro. But yeah, bro. That's going to be the end of this video. You know what I'm saying? Like, comment, subscribe, and we out, bro.